Now I'm going to be honest here, I have a personal gripe with a lot of things to do with gaming these days. Countless microtransactions, games coming out before they're ready, and even simple things like not being able to double jump. Yes, I know it's not possible within the rules of physics, but neither is walking around as a human ox, so let's just try and carry on being imaginative here. One of the main things I have an issue with is exclusive games. The question really stands if there actually is an issue with exclusive games now, or if they are slowly managing to bleed out. There are currently just two platforms where this issue is really prevalent to me. These are the Sony PlayStation and pretty much anything Nintendo. We know what my opinions of Nintendo are already, but just in case you don't, I'll leave a link to that video in the cards and in the description of this video. The main reason why I'm not including Xbox in this is just because most of the stuff that comes out on Xbox will also come out on Xbox Game Pass for PC. So although it's not coming to every console, it's still not really a complete exclusive. At the minute, Sony is starting to pull things in the right direction, with porting games over to PC. Recent examples of this are with the Spider-Man remaster that they ported over, which I need to say is absolutely incredible, like possibly one of my favourite games this year, and yes, I'm aware it's a re-release and a port. They've also managed to port over some of their biggest titles, like the original Horizon, God of War from 2019, and Days Gone. There's a few reasons that I think they've done this. One of the main ones being the issues with getting PlayStation 5s out to customers. Half from the fault of the major chip shortage during the pandemic, and then somewhat just due to them not being able to produce them fast enough. A similar thing had happened with the Switch during lockdown though. Most people were unable to get a Switch just because everyone was just buying loads up and it came to be a massive issue with all the scalpers. People were just reselling them for way over their worth. During this time, a lot of people turned to PC gaming, and it does seem to be becoming a lot more popular in the past few years. From some statistics that I found on the internet, and obviously I found them on the internet, so they have to be true, the amount of people that have moved over to some form of PC gaming has almost doubled since 2008. Now if we were to get rid of exclusives, one of the biggest things that this gives the industry is that a game will no doubt make more money if it's available on every platform. This really just seems like a no-brainer, right? I mean, more eyes on the product, more availability of the product, and more people just having the ability to access the product. Like, damn, at this point just stop making things exclusive and just sell it to everybody. Now the main thing with exclusives where it works is that mainly they're just made to try and push sales on hardware. And the biggest thing with this is that it really does work. I'm saying this because it's personally affected me, and not really in the best ways either. I only ended up buying a PlayStation 4 back in the day because I really wanted to play Spider-Man. You may have noticed from a few of the videos on this channel that I'm a big Spider-Man and Marvel fan. More content on those to come. This is luckily starting to break down now. We're seeing a lot more of a timed exclusive model than we are the full-bred exclusives. With PlayStation now starting to port everything over, this could really lead us into a better position going forward. To PC gamers at least. It still leaves the same issue with picking between consoles. As of right now, I will say that PlayStation do have a better grasp of the single player exclusives, and that's just right now, and it will most likely change at some point. Just because new games are coming out all the time, and Microsoft do seem to be trying to buy out a lot of big studios to try and get some bigger games under their belt. Now a good example of this is the current acquisition that they're trying to run through with. Attempting to buy Activision and all of its subsidiaries, which obviously includes things such as Blizzard. So not only would they then own World of Warcraft, which is one of the biggest MMO franchises in the world, they would also own Call of Duty, which we can all see that being a bad idea. PlayStation as of right now are very worried about this acquisition, because of the fact that it would potentially allow for Call of Duty games to become exclusive to Microsoft. So it would most likely be playable on Xbox, and then should be playable on PC, but it would take away the rights for PlayStation to be able to use it. Now at the moment, this is one of the most talked about points for exclusivity that there is. And I personally think that it could be one of the reasons why PlayStation have decided to start porting their games over to PC. Not just to elevate sales from games that, by now, aren't really making too much, but also to try and show that exclusivity should only really be timed. Even then though, timed exclusives are sometimes a massive ball ache. My personal example of this was the House of the Dead remake. The game launched as a Nintendo Switch exclusive, so I got it, only to then find that they launched it on PC a few days afterwards. This was irritating for me because I really would have preferred to have that game on PC, but I wasn't aware that the exclusive was timed, because of everything I had seen for it was just saying that it was always going to be on the Nintendo Switch. Now, the issue is that I think this will pretty much always stick with Nintendo, which as a company they really do suck. Link to that video in the description.
but they seem to pretty much never give their IPs to other companies. Which, again, it really sucks. The only way that you can play a Nintendo game on another console or a PC is through emulation, which I went through in detail in the other video, so make sure you try and check that out. Now, I'm massively on the side that exclusive games should all just be multi-platform. You should be able to play games that you want on the console you want to play them on. People prefer consoles for different reasons. I've explained it a few times, but if we're talking about consoles, I'll pretty much always prefer to play on an Xbox than on a PlayStation. And the main reason for that is just because of the controllers. Now don't get me wrong, the DualSense for the PS5 that's been introduced is absolutely incredible and the haptic feedback with the ridiculously weird triggers is insane. But they still have the same problem that every PlayStation has had for me, and that's the analog stick placement. For most people, this is fine, and I know I'm being incredibly pedantic with it, I just prefer having the analogs the way that, you know, every other console has done them. It just seems to make the most sense for me, and it's the most comfortable. At the minute, I've been completely off consoles, and I've just been using my PC and my Steam Deck. More on that another day. I just hope that someday soon they will realise that you've got more to give by just giving people freedom of choice with which console they are choosing to use. I hope you've enjoyed the video, let me know down below what your thoughts are on exclusive games and if you agree or disagree with what I've said, if there's anything that I've missed feel free to let me know, and feel free to like the video, subscribe if you've enjoyed it, and I'll catch you next time, have a good one.